Hi there and welcome to the very first episode of Your Time Q&A. This is a new series of vlogs that I will try to do every Wednesday and in which I will just pick some of your comments you leave in the comment boxes or on Facebook questions that you ask that I, that I can address a little bit more elaborate or remarks or ideas of suggestions that are just too nice and going just too deep not to share them with a the larger audience here in a separate vlog. And I start with the oldest one. You remember that I did uh, of an afterthought edition on Costas Papasafaropoulos last recording which was the Sonata in F major opus 118 and I asked actually the question why it is that this music of such a talented composer just uh, seem not to get a kind of traction that en enables him to be a full-time composer so to say and uh, Francois Couperin F. Cooper, which is his name on YouTube, so he got some support from France, wrote a very beautiful uh, quote and I would like to read it to you. So he wrote, why do people un feel uneasy about new music being written in old styles? So he picks in with the question I put forward. Well, that's a hard question. I think it has to do with one, the canon, the canon, that is, we have elected some composers to represent certain eras, and if something new appears, the whole chronology, the chronology, the system is broken somehow. That is why we want to give a name and failing to do so makes us uncomfortable. Connected to that is the notion that styles succeed each other, not only in time, but in achievements. I guess most educated people would see that Bach wasn't trying to be Mozart, for instance, and that everyone made what they really intended to make, even if influenced by when they did it. Nevertheless, this idea still floats around. Resurrecting an old style would be like dumping a computer in favor of the abacus. From that many people think one style is spent after another came to be, so that there is no point in using a language that was exhausted by previous composers. I don't know to answer this one except by saying that I feel it isn't the case. Some even say that there is no point in hearing the old pieces themselves and that is plain silly. Exactly because no one is hearing old music everywhere, they are interesting in being new in a way new music can't be. The whole thing about being original, people tend to overestimate what can be done without borrowing from others, so at once we get weaker works than they could have been and lots of excellent stuff gets ignored when, without deserving it in the last, in the least, sorry. For me that's a double loss. I probably forgot a lot of other points but it is getting too big already. And that's a great remark, a great suggestion that is just left on that afterthoughts and it says everything I have shared in that vlog in a more eloquent way. So thank you for posting that. Then I have a reaction, a question actually by Jackson Whitmer and he writes, just cut around to this recording, which is the Bach Partita. It's like medicine to my overactive mind, thank you. And that's the same with me and I think with many people. Bach is of course unbelievable, not only as, as music and as compositions, but also just listening and get really kind of mindset. And have you thought of playing Telemann, Moore Handel or Ernest Wolf? And I have to say, I haven't considered Telemann uh, at all actually. I dived into that, I must say, and there are some interesting um, things, new things that I didn't know. Handel has written keyboard music that I didn't know previously, so this message uh, got me to dive in more to that. Uh, Wolf, I have some music of uh, Gullen Wolf, yes. I've never tried that really on clavichord, so that's coming up. So, and then the last question is from Real Hogwood, who wrote me if I could play a piece of Scarlatti on clavichord. I will share a link with you in this video. If that is possible on clavichord, and now we are dealing with Italian music, I don't know if Scarlatti had a clavichord, by coincidence, I have recorded a sonata by Scarlatti, which will go, I think, next week for the 10th of uh, June on this channel, and it works 
perfectly on clavichord. Is it written for clavichord? I don't know. The reason that I dived into the music of Scarlatti is that I was uh, I got an email by a good friend of my of me who was sending uh, a file from the Petrucci library and I will share that link or later when we do the recordings with 12 sonatas published in London of Scarlatti for clavichord and I don't know the history of that publication but this is at the least you can say it's remarkable so this piece that uh, real hock uh, real I should write his name real hock wheat not hock wood hock wheat is suggesting is this sonata and just sight reading for you it's on my laptop here. That's of course fine on clavichord, but I must say if you go further and you have passages like this Again I'm sight reading and so on that is a, that's a kind of language that's more harpsichord like like this So on. That's of course no problem. Things like this. Then you might maybe want the, the big sound of, of a harpsichord. Things like that as well. This is very difficult on clavichord because you have to go between the black or the white keys here. It's possible to play, but to say that this is real clavichord music. Probably not. But this music of Scarlatti, I think that is that is a kind of harpsichord-like style where you have to benefit from the larger sound and from the effect more than going really into the details and the nuances. So that was it for this first Q&A Your Time session. I hope you like this series and we'll do it uh, every Wednesday. So if you leave your questions or your remarks or if you feel like sharing something with a larger audience, leave it in the comment boxes, share it with me on email or through Facebook. I'll pick it up and uh, I'll make a selection of that for this series of vlogs. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing to the channel as always. And I see you next time again. Bye.